Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of I Will Never Watch Evangelion, the anime interview podcast where I interview some friends and people and stuff about anime and their experiences with the medium and all that jazz. Today I'm joined by my very good friend and pal, Cass. Cass, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you on, Cass. So, uh, you, you know the drill, right? <laughs> I, I think I do by now. As someone that's uh, listened to uh, every single uh, episode of a uh, critically acclaimed American podcast, uh, I will never watch uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, I get the gist. Yeah. So 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 why don't you why don't you just kick let's kick things off right? You know what, what what's your story? You know what what's your exp- how how did you first come into the anime world as we know it? I had a little bit of an unconventional uh, beginning to my uh, Japanese uh, um, animation, uh, you know, the, the, the world of that. Uh, once upon a time, I was about 11 years old, and I was at a Twilight convention, and I found someone's uh, first... Uh, I found the first uh, volume of the uh, manga, um, Vampire Night, just laying on the ground, so I... Uh, being a rebellious child, I just, I took that, and I read it, and I loved it. And then, uh, you know, when, when, when you're an emo teen, it's typically, it's typically rite of passage to, uh, consume, uh, you know, Japanese anime, critically acclaimed Japanese anime. Uh, Is it? So I, I, I think so. I, I- they typically go hand in hand. I never really grew up with that experience. I I don't know if I've told you before, but uh, as a like twelve year old, I I w- thought, man, I wish emo people existed, because I didn't know well, that it was a thing. Unfortunately, uh, we do. Uh, yeah. So I I got started uh, just with like the the most popular ones. Uh, just like, what's the word here? We'll just say the most popular one. So I, I got started in like uh, late middle school. I'd say eighth grade watching. Well, like, like when you, you say know, most popular ones, like what are some like examples of? Like, like classic uh, beginner weeb anime. So like Death Note, Soul Eater, Italia, Black Butler, just like stuff ah, like that. Ah, <laughs> yes, of course, those so anime. Like intro weeb anime. Yeah. Uh, and then. Then I got into Attack on Titan as a high schooler, which I kind of regret uh, talking about right now. And I was a, I cosplayed Levi in like jun- junior of high school or something like that because I'm short. Uh, I remember like, that. <laughs> that's that's my beginning. I remember seeing a photo of that I think on Facebook or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now that we have your history of anime out of the way, what's like? <laughs> Well, if you had to really, like, pick, like, a favorite or, like, just, like, some anime in general that, like, modern cast really enjoys, what would you say, like, how how have your tastes evolved over time? Like, what what what's what, what's the modern day you going to, like, ter- tune into nowadays? Well, uh, I'd say at the beginning, I was more so just into, like, what was popular because I kind of figured it's popular for a reason. I'm just going to consume uh, this particular show. But I guess a uh, typical cast today, uh, I'm, I'm really into, like, weird, fucky, like, trauma psychological animes. So, like, uh, you know, Evangelion, for instance. Uh, I like Madoka. I like Devilman Crybaby, Ghost in the Shell, st- stuff like that. Just, like, things that'll, that'll really fuck me up. Yeah. I get you. <laughs> I mean, who among us doesn't like just simply getting emotionally fucked up? Oh, exactly. The shows they're watching. Now, now, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this, but (laughs) you know what's you know what doesn't fuck you up? What doesn't fuck you up? Uh, critically acclaimed Japanese animated series K-On. Oh. Are you are are you are you ready to engage in some of this uh feel good anime experience? Oh yes, absolutely. I would like to engage uh. (laughs) <laughs> in in the viewing of a uh, critically acclaimed Japanese anime, uh, K-On! Alright, hell yeah. So we shall return from after watching the first episode of K-On! Uh, see you all on the other side. Uh, 
All right, so we're back. Um, so, uh, what you what you th- what you think, Cass? How- uh, what can I say? We 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 just sat here and watched uh about about twenty five minutes of uh cute girls just playing music, and I think uh, it's pretty wholesome. Yeah, I I forgot like how like lighthearted and like I don't know the words to describe it, but it's such like the exact opposite of everything that Evangelion is. Oh, exactly. I like. I thought you know it it would it would be fun to to discuss, sort of like, you know, like cutesy anime and then like uh, anime that will fuck you up for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, bit. like God, like it's it's very it's like it's like drinking taking a sip of like some freshly squeezed lemonade, <laughs> you know, after consuming a extremely hot potato chip. Um, Exa- well, spicy potato spicy chips. you know like it's just very soothing like immediately it, it's it's like it it's it's like mac and cheese for your soul right i you know what that might actually be the perfect description of kaon that i've ever heard in my life it's mac and cheese for the soul it's, it's mac just, and cheese for the soul it's just comforting and stuff because like nothing bad's gonna ever happen it's just like a b- bunch of like high schoolers playing just having fun playing music you know so, I, so exactly. like, I gotta ask the all important question, and I hope you're ready for this. Oh, of course. Who who's your favorite of the the oh. four main characters? <laughs> wow. All right. Um, I'm like a perfect uh mix between uh Mio and uh Mugi. Is that her name? Is it Mio? Yeah. Uh, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, so. it is Mio. Yeah. Uh, because on one hand, I like uh super serious uh like you know black haired uh you know uh japanese anime equivalent of emo girl but also uh yeah moogie's eyebrows though oh yeah and she's got thick eyebrows and i don't know she's just she's just good she she's a good character (laughs) but yeah uh i have to be honest and i hope you can forgive me for what i'm about to say yes but um i'm a ritsu apologist uh oh i i personally am a big (laughs) fan of ritsu which apparently according to tiff is a bit controversial because tiff uh very much dislikes ritsu with a passion i'll be honest Uh, with you here i think ritsu is uh my least favorite of the four but she's still she's good yeah uh her intentions are good I just, like, you know, of the four, I see myself in Ritsu the most, like, of just, like, playfully being an asshole. (laughs) You know, like, not being serious about it. Of course. Just, like, playfully just being a bit of a dick. Because, like, that's what, like, Tiff would say whenever I bring up that I like Ritsu. She'd just always be like, but she's always so mean to, like, is it Mugi, right? (laughs) Yeah, Mugi. She's always so mean to Mugi, and she's, like, doing, like, making her uncomfortable. And my response is just, like, yeah, but that's just their friendship dynamic, you know? Yeah. You know what? You You really turned me around. Uh, You really swayed me on uh, Ritsu as a character. Yeah. I think it's... She's still my least favorite, but like I don't dislike her as a character anymore. She's she's very good. I they're all I was, very good. Yeah, they're. It's it's hard. Like when I say like Ritsu's my favorite, like I gotta like put a, a big giant asterisk at the end of that favorite part because like they're <laughs> all like just pretty much equally good. Like they're all just like very good. Just like they're good people, and good characters, and it's very enjoyable watching their hijinks. They're, uh, they're my favorite girls. They're, they're good girls. And, like, yeah. I don't know what I'm fucking saying. <laughs> so, uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, K-On. K-On. So, yeah, I, uh, a- another big thing that I like in anime is, uh, I'm a huge fan of, like, music themed animes. So, like, there's, Which makes there's sense. K-On. And, the- yeah, as a musician, uh, I really like K-On. And, uh, Kids on the Slope, which is just like a uh, whiplash anime, and uh, Beck. Beck is one of my favorites, but I don't really know if anyone really knows what it is. I've personally never heard of Beck before, but I mean, he- if it's like a good music anime, I'll probably have to check it out at some point. Oh, it's very good. I'm always looking to expand my <laughs> anime palette 
personally. It's kind of like a... I haven't seen it in a few years, so, like, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but uh, I remember it being, like, a more serious K-On. Like, it, it's, like, uh, like college age and, like, actual drama and, uh, I don't know, well, it's just a more realistic K-On. And, all right. Uh, that they're, they're very good. Music's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then. So I, I came out of this with a new recommendation for me to watch. And of course. you came out of this with uh, a newfound appreciation for Ritsu, I think. Yes. So is there anything else you'd like to uh, talk about, about K-On! About, about? I guess just that uh, I really appreciate how uh, whoever did the art for K-On! At least in uh, anime form, uh they use actual branded instruments like the Yamaha drums, and uh, I believe Yui plays a, a Gibson Les Paul eventually. So yeah, I I love that they just throw in little like, you know, real uh, instruments instead of just like that's a guitar and th- there's like nothing on it. It's nothing special about it. Yeah, they, they paid attention and it, the the detail in the show is just very good to me. I love Spe- it. Speaking of the detail, uh, there's one thing I wanted to point out, which yes. is that, like, I really love the show's lack of, like, symbolism in its imagery. Yeah. Which which I don't want to sound like a bad thing. <laughs> it's just that, like, I, when I was watching Kill a Kill with Matt, like, there was, like, they pointed out things in, like, the background, in, you know, and, like, how they were reflective of, like, the characters, like, you know, personality and what they're all about specifically the scene when gamagori jumps out the window to abide by the no running in the halls rule uh you know that's just like kind of a background thing that i had never noticed before but with like uh with k-on there's there's nothing there's just nothing going on it's just simply like it's just like turn your brain off just enjoy being spoon-fed anime mac and cheese directly into your soul which it's just just cute little shots of like uh Yui stuffed animal in a room and like posters on the wall and like the sky and like students standing in the hallway it's just it's just a nice little uh like collage of yeah high school it's it's just nice and you don't have to think too much about it because there's nothing to think about (laughs) it's exactly which again i don't mean as a bad thing i just mean it's very like it's like I'm, i'm finally able to like rest my brain at, from this podcast from because every time i've like watched an anime for this show i've like pay, watched it with a critical eye trying to like notice any symbolism or anything in the background but with k like i don't have to do that so like it, it was like i could just watch an anime and not have to pay attention to shit and it was just it, it was just a nice time i'm glad to hear it so now that we've gotten the good times out of the way, are you ready to suffer, Cass? Oh, always. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to go and watch episode four of Neon Genesis Evangelion, critically acclaimed Japanese animated series, and then we'll be back. Are are, are you are you ready, Cass? Let's... I'm excited to watch episode four of critically acclaimed Japanese anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, oh boy. Here, here, here we go. So we're back. Uh, how, welcome, welcome back, everyone. Uh, how how are you feeling after that episode, Cass? Holy shit, man! I really love uh, me uh, a good good helping of a uh, critically acclaimed uh, Japanese anime, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of like this episode, even though like nothing really happens. Like. I mean, all that really happens is just that, like, Shinji runs away and he quits, but then he, yeah. like, says Uno Reverse to that. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, one of the more, uh, I'd say, uneventful episodes, but uh, it's still still pretty good. I think in, like, the grand pacing of the show, like, this is a pretty good episode. Because, like, the first episode, it's all, like, building up, leading you to think it's going to be, like, this epic spectacle fight. Episode 2 is just kind of, like, it, it shows that, like, it's that's not what the show is about. And then it, like, 
it shows the aftermath and and of shit and episode three is just kind of like the horrors of war and its effect on like shinji psyche and they're Mm. all like just very like deep and intense but like this episode like it kind of like goes into like how shinji's feeling but for the most part it's just kind of like shinji like taking a day off you know right and Uh... realizing that he has friends to kind of build off of what Ezra said uh, in in uh, his episode, uh, I just love how they the, the episode was like a, a little I'd say a little more than half was just uh, silence and just like background uh, insect noises, and uh, I I also just really like how they use silence to uh, it more or less just captures like how alone Shinji must be feeling like without any familial love or like anyone that could ever understand like the the trauma that he's going through may may i be cringy for a second of course uh to quote uh american pop band uh 21 pilots um (laughs) sometimes quiet is violent (laughs) oh oh fuck (laughs) (laughs) which like in this case it's just it it's emphasis it it's a metaphor for how shinji feels right which yeah like fuck i don't don't, this is this is just like i i I keep saying it but like this 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 podcast has like taken a complete 180 from its original intent and it's turned into just me just enjoying evangelion and boy howdy do i sure love uh neon genesis evangelion critically acclaimed japanese animated series (laughs) And I'm 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 so happy about that, by the way, because uh, I'd say, um, Evangelion's probably my favorite, if not like a close second to something else that I can't think of at the top of my head. I just I, I like I like how it's done. It's very good. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of like the '90s anime style and just like the simplicity of like how characters are drawn. Yeah, and it's not over the top. And I'm also uh, a huge consumer of uh, psychological fiction, and I, I really like uh, giant robot media. And uh, this fulfills uh, all three of the things that I really like uh, in in just in just so a wait, thing out y- in the world. You like giant robots? I, you know, uh, not specifically, but I'm finding out that. Uh, a lot of things that involve giant robots that you know from the very beginning uh, turn out to be my favorite things. Uh, for instance, uh, Metal Gear Solid is a kind of a giant robot, uh, just yeah. a vi- video game. And then, but you don't end up watching it for that, you know, or playing it for that. It it turns into uh, just everything else surrounding the giant robot. Uh, I might have a recommendation for a show that you might like, maybe, that has giant robot in it. Give me this. Uh, it all dep- hinges on... I'm going to ask you a question first. And you got... Depending on how you answer this, will determine whether or not I can safely recommend this show or not. Are you bothered by a little bit too much horniness? <laughs> no. Okay, then you should watch this uh, anime called Darling in the Franks okay i'm gonna write that down uh it's a little bit horny uh not gonna lie um that's okay but it's also it's got giant robots and uh it's supposed to be really good i watched it and was not a fan but i've heard many people (laughs) rave about it so i'm just gonna take that as i didn't understand it (laughs) because uh when I had that opinion, I also had the opinion that Evangelion was trash. So, um, I, I think I need to rewatch it to, like, really get a grasp for how I truly would feel about it. But, yeah, uh, it's like, Frank's is, like, F-R-A-N-X-X. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an, it's an anime. All right. I'm going um, to check that out. But, yeah, uh evangelion um what else is there really to say i guess there's not really a lot whole lot to like say about this episode because nothing really happened you know right 
and I feel like this is going to end up being a shorter podcast episode because we didn't really talk about much, but, like, that's not really anyone's fault. That's just no. kind of... It's just kind of like how the cookie crumbles, you know? <laughs> like, I had no idea that this was going to be, like, the episode of Eva where, like, nothing really of substance happens aside from, like, some Shinji stuff, but, like, you know, no, like... No major developments aside from him realizing he has friends and taking, like, two days off running away from home and then almost quitting uh, nerve and then at the very end not quitting nerve kind of <laughs> it's implied i think i i promise you it gets so much better and so much happens just all at once it's almost too much uh at a certain point and I, it's so good yeah i i mean hey like i'm already in for the ride like i'm already sold on this the first episode really sunk its teeth into me and episodes two and three really just dug deeper episode four like the it's 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 jaw loosened a little bit but like its teeth are still thoroughly sunk into me so like you know honestly i am i i'm still looking forward to watching more of this show i'm i'm looking forward to you uh seeing more of this show it's good it's It's, good it's uh probably my favorite as as i'll say again I can't really yeah. think of anything that's uh, hit me as hard, except possibly Dove My Cry Baby. But I, I enjoy this uh, a lot yeah. more than that. I, yeah. I really like uh, anime that will fuck me up. And honestly, who among us doesn't like anime that will <laughs> fuck you up? <laughs> so do you have anything else to say as we're wrapping up the show? Um, can I do a self-promotion really quick? Oh, I mean, I was going to, like, I meant, like, any any final <laughs> thoughts on the episode before, like, we oh, get into, I see. like, you know. Uh, I'd say I also really like how uh, Ava captures, like, it's very real to uh, how human nature is and how that works and uh, yeah. how, how trauma and depression and, like, greed and ego and selfishness and stuff like that how that how that works and it like goes into how how certain characters got that way it's kind of like they're they're real people not not just characters in a in a television show uh from the 90s yeah yeah it's good as hell it's keep watching (laughs) Ava. it's real heckin' good all right (laughs) So that's going to do it for us for this episode of I Will Never Watch Evangelion, the anime interview podcast. I've been uh, RTRT2D. My lovely guest today has been Cass. Cass, is there anything you would like to plug or advertise or anything like that? Uh, my Twitter account is uh, at AmIABall. It's an awful American football reference. And uh, I'm in a alt-rock band called Jelly Side Down. And we have an album coming out uh, on Halloween 2020. And uh, I'd say that's it for my uh self-promotion i i'm gonna can i promote something for you real quick of course uh stream goose wayne on spotify today oh hell yeah but <laughs> goose wayne the hit single by jelly side down it, thank it's, you so much uh, as someone who's merely just a fan of their band uh i gotta say it's some spicy tunes and uh just yeah go listen to that listen to it stop stop listening to this and go listen to that <laughs> Right, right after this i'm assuming yeah. you're listening on spotify just go straight to our page and uh listen to our music yeah so anyways that's gonna do it for today thank you all for coming by to watch and listen thank you Cass, for joining me it's been a wonderful time having you on the podcast thank you so much and uh I'll, i will see you all in in the next one G- good goodbye goodbye